What's going on guys? This is Cross and what I'd like to talk to you about today is setting up your Roll20 5e D&D campaign for the first time. We're going to go over installation, we're going to pick our character sheet, we're going to select our APIs, and then we're going to go over the configuration, setting up each of the APIs so that you're ready to go for your players. This is going to be a multi-part video. It's too much to cover in one video, but let's get going. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to log into our account. We're going to be presented with this screen. And as you can see, I've got several games already going, either from the past or current ones that are ongoing. What you're going to do is you're just simply going to click your Create New Game button. And we're going to title this d and 5e. And we're going to go down here and we are going to select a 5th edition shaped Dungeons and Dragons sheet. And it looks like this. It's authored by Crix on Roll20. So just check that to make sure you have the right sheet installed. And we are ready to create the game. Go through a slight loading process. All right, now for pro subscribers, you're gonna wanna immediately back out of this and go back to your recent games. You're gonna find your campaign here. It's your most recent. We're gonna go into the settings of this campaign. We're looking for API scripts. Now this is the one-click API installation screen. And so I have a few APIs that I like to install on all of my campaigns. The first being the 5e shaped companion script. And like I said, we're going to go over how all the how all of this interacts with your campaign. Just know that this is something that works directly with the character sheet that we installed. This is this is all how to use it here. We're just simply going to add script. Excellent. The next one we're looking for is the torch script. Now what this is going to do is work directly with dynamic lighting. And it's going to allow you to, if a player is going through a cavern, let's say he's a human, he doesn't have dark vision, and he wants to light a torch, you're going to have these commands that allow you to turn his torch on with just a click of a button without having to go into his token and select his vision manually. It's just a real quick way of doing that. And if something snuffs out light, you can select all the light sources and click it off with one button and all of a sudden the whole room goes dark and it adds a, a depth of immersion, so to speak. The next thing we're going to install is group initiative. Is right here. Group initiative allows you to save time rolling initiative for your enemy combatants or even your players if, if you play your game that way. You can select all of your enemies and click one button and they will all individually roll their initiative and apply it to the turn, ta the turn order table. Uh, normally, you would have to select them all individually and roll their initiatives and put them in the turn order table. So this saves you a lot of time. You know, when you say, okay guys, let's roll initiative, and then you click that button, and all of the enemies pop up on the turn table, it, it means that you're done before your players. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And then finally, token mod. Token mod is a excellent API that I recommend because it allows you to manipulate several tokens all at once. You can select status effects. You can make them with certain macros. You can make them all take a specific amount of damage. So if these three guys take 20 damage, you can select all three targets, hit your damage macro, and just input the value 20, and they will all take 20 damage. Mostly what I use it for is if an enemy has 13 hit points left and you're player just did 16 damage to him 
Well, that killed that target, and you're aware of that, so you select the token, and you hit the death macro. It'll send his HP down to zero, where it belongs, and it will also put a big red X on the, on the token. It's very satisfying for the player when he deals that damage to see that red X appear instantly as the health goes, goes down. You know, it signifies that you have indeed, in fact, killed this creature or person or whatever, whatever he happens to be killing. And you can manipulate several things throughout the token. So it's very, very useful. Um, there are a lot of creative, creative uses for this. We're going to go ahead and install that. Now, when you install this, a error will appear. And it will say token modder, its dependencies, read or write fields that are used by other scripts you have currently installed. Uh, there's a possibility that these scripts might conflict with each other. I've never had a conflict with this script working with any other scripts ever. So it's pretty safe to install. Excellent. Now this is your dream team, so to speak, of API scripts. If there are other scripts that maybe you recommend that I haven't covered here, feel free to include them in the comments below. However, these are the ones that I feel every 5e campaign needs. Some of them are, are somewhat optional. I, I use um, world map discovery from time to time, um, but it's not essential for creating your campaign and for running your campaign. These are the ones that you should familiarize yourself with first before moving on to the other ones. That's why we're only including these. All right, so we have these installed. Then they are installed. There's no need to save anything else anymore. We're going to go to the Home tab, and we are going to join our 5th edition campaign. And at this point, we are going to be ready to start configuring some of our APIs, which we will go over in the next videos, kind of keep them a little separated so that it's not too, too much information all at once. So I'll see you in the next video. And if you like this content or future content, feel free to subscribe. There's a button right there on the screen and you should be able to go ahead and click on the next video.